Hello YouTube, this is Chessio from Stanley APKs. So welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off in the last tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can save uh, functions and, and how you can execute functions. And so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open uh, SSH into your Raspberry Pi. And in my case I'm going to open uh, two, two, two of them because I'll be doing two things at once. So I'll be opening a second one. And now that I have two terminals open, I'm going in this one I'm gonna open Octave. And in this one I'm going to clear so you can see better. Okay, while this is opening, this right here is from the, the GNU.org manual that I told you in the last tutorial. And I'm going to be running this example. I'm going to be showing you uh, two, two ways of doing uh, functions. Uh, one way is to do them. You, you find where you're going to do, and you copy it, and then you can copy and paste line by line, as I'm doing right now. And as you can see, this will become very tedious very quickly because you're doing one by one and and doing that. And then that's one way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's, it will be very slow, especially when you're dealing with lots of lines of code. Another way you can do is you can kind of write it in, in, into a format that you can just copy and paste for example, like this. Where did I leave off? Uh, left, uh, there. And you can do that. It's a lot faster, but I'll show you the problems with doing it this way. And as you can see, it did that. That's fine. And you can do the lines that, that you have not yet done. And then now copy and paste that one. And you'll see a problem with this one right now. The problem of copying and pasting stuff. You see that? This is what you intended to copy. And look what it pasted. When you're dealing with different formats or different, you're going to encounter this problem. And if you're using this method of just copying and pasting, more, a lot of times it it has unintended consequences. Okay, so one way to do it is let's fix it first. And 200, this is what I wanted. And now it's done. And I'll copy and paste that last one there. Paste and now solve it. We solving deliver more solver or ODE and now plot T and X and now it's, it's, it's going to begin to plot. And as you can see, this is an, a way to do it. I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just slow. And as you can see, it's error prone because uh, if you're copying and pasting lines. Uh, lots of lines you can encounter the error that we encounter there so as I, can, as I said it can be error prone at times so that is one way I'm going to show you another way another way you can copy and paste it uh, using your favorite favorite editor whether it's Emacs or Nano and you can go and you can create a file in this case this file is cool.m uh, we use the .m just like MATLAB to to go to be able to to use uh, MATLAB code. Uh, they, it's normally used .m. So if you open it, you're gonna see this one was created with with Emacs, so you, that's why the the big header. And you can see this is the the function that uh, that it, that is there, and you can. Now, it's going to be a little bit cleaner, 
because it's already saved in the same format that you'll be using and you can do it, let's say, you can do it that way similar to what we did last time and you can go line by line and do that and doing it the slow way again but it's only four lines so it's okay enter and then C sine cosine paste and then surf Z and then enter and now it's waiting and then you tell it to end the function and that's one way to do it you can do it that way and then you call it because you know the name of it and it will execute. Uh, this is a little bit better because you didn't get the errors that you got the first time, but it's still you're still doing it line by line. I mean, uh, you're still in the same problem. But let's say that you can. Oops. What did I do here? Control. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, as you can see. The file is here, cool.m, and I'm going to open a new version, uh, uh, a different session of Active that it doesn't know anything. It doesn't know anything about about the last session that was open. As you can see, it's a completely new session inter of the interpreter. And all you need to do once it's open, you go to the file where it's located in this case it's located there and you can all you need to do is call it and it will execute this is uh, this can become very very handy especially when you're calling functions from different programs and you and you're calling them from different areas of, of, of where you're working and uh, but once it's saved into a file, the, all you need is the name of the function and it will execute. And that's a lot better and it's, it's permanent, it is saved in, into an M file wherever you, you, you are going to call it. And you can call it from anywhere. So this is a, a lot better um, and more time efficient. And you can do the, the, the file, you know, uh, write the, your file, save it and then you can use it later you don't have to in interpreter it's only one session at that time and if you don't save it it gets lost so it's not it's not permanent okay but this is a uh, we'll do a lot a lot more of these um, especially when you're dealing with computer vision uh, some of the programs are, 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 are longer so you don't want to have to be doing them line by line that's why I, I, I did this tutorial to to show you how to save functions individually Okay, because it will become very handy later. But this is the end of this tutorial. Like I always say, if you like this tutorial, please click the like box and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.